This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning for March 13, 2023, stolen fiber optic cables recovered in Clarendon, man in custody. The police in Clarendon yesterday recovered a stolen fiber optic cables in a motor truck. A man was taken into custody. The police report that about 3.30 Sunday morning, information was received that men were seen removing fiber optic cables in Mineral Heights. A team was dispatched to the area, but nothing was discovered. The police say further intelligence led to the interception of a gray Isuzu truck, which was carrying fiber optic cables. Two of the truck's occupants reportedly ran, while a third man was arrested. Cocaine seized in St. James man arrested. A St. James resident was on Saturday arrested by the police in relation to the seizure of a quantity of cocaine at a love lane in Montego Bay. It was reported that about 6.15 a.m., a police and military team conducted an operation in the area when a premises was searched. According to the police, 60 pieces of cocaine were found in a container beneath the house. The occupant of the premises was subsequently arrested. However, his identity is being withheld pending further investigations. The police say the estimated street value of the illicit drug has not been ascertained. Concerns are raised as some security guards have been forced to resign ahead of April 1 reclassification. Concern is being raised that some security companies have been forcing security guards to resign and assign one-year contracts ahead of the April 1 timeline for transitioning the guards from being contract workers to employees. Last September, the Supreme Court ruled that security guards were employees and not independent contractors. President of the Union of Clerical Administrative and Supervisory Employees, Vincent Morrison, says it's unfortunate that the companies are trying to circumvent the process even after the court ruling. Mr. Morrison says the move by the security companies is illegal. Immigration officers threaten possible industrial action this week. There could be disruptions at the island's ports of entry this week as immigration officers assigned to the Passport Immigration and the Citizenship Agency are again restive. The National Workers' Union, which represents the immigration officers, recently wrote a letter to the Ministry of Finance highlighting a number of issues affecting the immigration officers. It cited the non-payment of a special allowance and the disparity in the payment of seniority allowance. The union also raised the questions about overtime payment and the duty allowance and wanted a clarification of a circular regarding the payment of mileage. NWU General Secretary Granville Valentine told the news that the management of PICA has consistently failed to address the concerns of the immigration officers. He says that the employees have lost their confidence in the management of PICA and warned of possible industrial action this week. Medical Doctors Association accepts wage offer from government. The Jamaica Medical Doctors Association on Sunday voted to accept the government's wage offer. President of the JMDA, Dr. Mindy Fitzhenley, said 95% of those who voted on Sunday during a special meeting of the JMDA elected to accept the offer. The JMDA met with its membership this evening, and the outcome of the vote is that 95% of persons voted to accept the new compensation package from the Ministry of Finance, Fitzhenley said. Minister of Finance and the Public Service, Dr. Nigel Clark, during a four-hour-long opening presentation in the 2023-2024 budget debate inside Gordon House, announced that, that $4.3 billion has been tacked onto the budget for this fiscal year to settle wage agreements with some of the major public sector groups, which ends on March 31. Fitz Henley said that the wage offer will protect and allow future generations of doctors to properly be hired in the post. It is important to note that with this offer, we get all of our doctors currently employed in a contract into a post, and we also protect the future generation of doctors to come by, ensuring that they also have to be hired into a post, she added. On Friday, March 10, Minister of Finance and the Public Service sent a new wage offer to members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, hours after the leadership of the groups representing the COPS 
denied that they had rejected a proposed pay package from the government. The police are presently reviewing the latest offer from the government and as of now represent the largest group of public sector employees yet to sign as teachers also voted to accept the offer on Sunday. This will ensure normality returns to the classroom on Monday. Reports reaching the news are that 803 delegates of the 25,000 Strong Jamaica Teachers Association voted, with 629 voting to accept the offer and 147 voting to reject it. There was one abstention. Last week, teachers staged four days of protest in the form of sick-outs, sit-ins, and go slow to press their demand for what they said was a livable wage. Students were turned back when they turned up at school. The militant teachers only returned to the classroom for regular duties on Friday after they were warned by the Ministry of Education that their pay could be docked. Teachers represented the largest group of some 40,000 public sector employees who had refused to sign the new wage offer under the government's public sector compensation review program. Finance and the Public Service Minister, Dr. Nigel Clark, has repeatedly warned that back salaries not paid during the current financial year that ends on March 31 will not be accommodated in the upcoming budget and will not be paid for several budget cycles. That position has been dismissed by the parliamentary opposition as nothing more than an attempt to intimidate and bully workers into signing, as it said provisions can be made to ensure the payments are made as soon as the negotiations are concluded. 42 killed in road crashes in February, says RSU. The Road Safety Unit is reporting that 42 people were killed in 33 fatal crashes during the month of February. This is one more than the 41 people who were killed in February 2022, an overall increase of 2%. A total of 13 lives were lost in four multiple fatal crashes during the month. A parish-by-parish -parish breakdown of the fatalities during the month shows that St. Andrew was the most dangerous for road users with 10 deaths. Manchester came next with 7, followed by St. Catherine with 6. Clarendon recorded 4 road deaths during the month of February, while the parishes of St. Anne and St. Mary had 3 each. Kingston, St. Elizabeth, St. James and Hanover each recorded 2 deaths during the month. Portland recorded a single fatality, while St. Thomas, Trelawney and Westmoreland had zero fatalities during the month under review. Meanwhile, the RSU is reporting that 24% of those killed on the nation's roads in February were pedestrians. Additionally, private motor vehicle drivers accounted for 12% of the road users killed during February, private motor vehicle passengers accounted for 5%, motorcyclists accounted for 26%, while pedal cyclists accounted for 7%. Vulnerable road users such as pedestrians, pedal cyclists, motorcyclists and pillion riders accounted for 62% of those killed in road crashes during the month. Of those who died, 93% were males and 7% were females. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.